Welcome to Transmissions. When we use our dominant sense, which is the sense of the vision, and take a look around, what do we really see? We see a lot of objects, shapes, colors, forms, movements, and they seem to be happening in a background of emptiness, in a background of space. The objects are arranged in uh, this empty background of space. We can say that the space is an absence of objects. This can be a very good definition to start with. So space is an absence. It is not something which is present. If you take a closer look, the space permeates everything. The space is everywhere. Even the objects are permeated by space. You can see this when you look inside water, very clear water, or you look through a very thick slab of glass. The space is inside the glass also. The space is inside the water also. It is something which is everywhere. It is not really an absence. It is the background on which everything appears. Our ears also provide us with a little bit of sense of space, spaciousness. There is an audio space around us. We get a little bit of sense of directions from ears. So that can be said to be a totally a somewhat different kind of space that we encounter when we use our ears. When we use our eyes, we see a different kind of space. That space can be called as a perceptual space, if you want to have a name for it. There can be uh, different kinds of spaces. For example, uh, the space between planets. That is what an astronomer is going to call as space. There is a certain limitation of our perception that uh, we cannot perceive this astronomical space, this blackness. But still it is there. There is a vast amount of space between planets. Similarly, there is another kind of space which you can find between atoms. Just now I said that when you look through a transparent object, you will see nothing but space. There is space, a lot of space between atoms. Again, it is not within our capability to see it. It is just an inference. There can be more kinds of spaces, such as the mathematical space where you can assign a model to descriptions of certain phenomena and you can create a space to get a very reliable kind of uh, explanation for that phenomena. The most uh, familiar kind of uh, space that we use is our famous Cartesian space, the three-dimensional space with three orthogonal axes and uh, this is what we call as our 3D space. It is a mathematical space actually. It is all mathematics. But it corresponds very nicely with our perceptual space. So we use it. It is very useful. Then there can be mental space where our thoughts are happening, where our feelings are happening, where our memories can be found, where emotions appear. Even perceptions appear in the mental space only. And phenomena such as dreams, they appear in mental space. 
where there is no physical space, but we do see spaces in the mind. And then there is the space of consciousness where all the spaces appear. It is the space which knows. It is the space which is aware of everything. We are aware of everything in the space of consciousness. You can probably find some more kinds of spaces depending on the situation, depending on the experience that we are trying to handle. And uh, now you must be wondering why there are so many spaces. Why there are so many kinds of spaces here. That is because we create a space whenever it is necessary. We create an arrangement, a model of uh, something, some experience. And we try to arrange that experience on that background. And space is that background on which the experience is being arranged. So perception is simply an arrangement of information that is coming through uh, eyes or ears and uh, this arrangement is what we call as space. We create an arrangement, we create a structure, a substructure and a background, a foundation for our experience and we call it a space. Since there are limits to our perception, we need all these spaces. For example, we cannot look uh, between the atoms directly. So we need to conceptualize a space there and it is it is very weird space actually. Then we need uh, to explain the distances between planets and we need to again imagine that there is a space between planets. Although we cannot see it when we take a look at the sky, the sky appears a flat uh, sphere on which there are dots of lights and the sun and the moon they also almost appear flat disks. We do not see millions of kilometers of space. We do see some space in our room that is within the limits of our perception and we do see up to a few kilometers we can sense because of the air and fog and things. Uh, we can estimate and how much depth there is, how much space there is. But uh, as soon as the distances become large enough, we lose the perception of space. The high mountains, they almost appear flat, even though they are many kilometers deep in uh, um, the direction of our vision. We do see them as flat surfaces. So because of these limitations, we need to invent new spaces. Then there are uh, spaces which uh, do not occur when uh, in ordinary circumstances in day-to-day -day life. When we travel at very, very high speed, for example, the space does not remain this Cartesian space that people very well know these things now nowadays. It becomes a relativistic space. When there is extreme amount of gravity, the space changes. And now we need a different kind of space. And now we need different kind of systems, different mathematical models to explain those phenomena, to explain our experience. So we create new spaces. That gives us a hint that makes us suspicious that probably the space is not something which is present in this reality, this experience. It is being created. And probably the mind is simply computing a space out of whatever information it is g uh, gathering through senses. And uh, this model that the mind has made for its use is our perceptual space. There is no perceptual space out there. The space does not exist because it keeps changing depending on uh, what is trying to perceive it. A person who, uh, who has lost his eye, one of the eye, he won't be able to perceive depth so efficiently. He may try to guess a little bit of space by moving 
sideways, moving the head sideways. Using parallax, we can uh, still gauge a little bit of space. But uh, the perceptual space will be limited for such a person. And if you take another species, another animal, for example, um, a horse, the space appears totally different to the horse. And it is going to appear totally different to a fish that needs to move up and down also, or a bird that needs to move very, very quickly through air. It is a different kind of space for these animals. For a honeybee, that will be a totally different experience of the space. Probably the mind of the honeybee arranges things very, very differently because the eyes are totally different from ours. There are hundreds of eyes on a honeybee. So it is a function of the senses. Space depends on senses. Space is not absolute something which exists out there. Different senses are going to report different kind of spaces. So different minds will create different kinds of spaces. And this can be seen very easily when a person is drunk or under the influence of drugs or something. The space is distorted. Cannot judge the distances very well. The perception of the space can be seen as being made by the mind. When you take a look at the mirror, which is our day-to-day -day experience, let us say there is a big mirror, such as a bathroom mirror, the wall-to-wall -wall mirror, we see objects that are being reflected in the mirror. And also, magically, we see a space in the mirror. Although, when you try to move into that space in the mirror, you cannot you encounter a solid wall, a solid mirror. You cannot move into that space. But that space is as real as the space that we see directly. There is no doubt in our mind there is space in the mirror. But really, there is no space. Similarly, there is a space in 3D movies which uh, um, gives an illusion of depth. There is space in our computer games there is many kilometers of space in uh, any game that uh, you, you must have played on computer. There is no space in the screen, but the movement of the characters, the movement on the screen is enough to give us an illusion of the space. We can move into the space in the computer. If you have headsets on, if you are in a virtual reality, fully immersive environment, then your mind will produce a very realistic space there. It won't, you won't be possible, you won't be able to distinguish it from a real space. Yes, the objects may look weird, but the space is real. So the mind can be tricked very easily into thinking that it is moving in space. We can say that, oh, probably the perception is creating some model, some uh, space in our minds. But uh, the real space is the one where I can move. If there is no space in the room, then where am I moving actually? So this is a very interesting question. If there is no space, if it is a product of the mind or is a model only, then where are objects moving really? Let us reverse it, look at it in this, in this way that if there is no movement, there is no space. If we cannot perceive movement, we won't be able to perceive space. So it seems movement or motion is more fundamental than space. The distance and time both can be derived out of motion. The distances do not exist really. The time, as we saw in our last episode, does not really exist. It is motion that gives us a sense of both distances and time. So sometimes we measure the distances in the units of time. Like we say, uh, my city is two hours away from your city. Or we use light years to uh, measure the distance between galaxies and so on. This is completely valid because motion 
is more fundamental. The space is derived out of motion. Without motion, there is no space. Even the mathematical space is actually only numbers. If you do not change the locations, there is no space. If the locations cannot be changed, you cannot have a space. So you can plot a space on your computer screen in a game, for example. It is a plotting of the mathematical environment only, the numbers only. And you can, if there is no change, there is no space. If the characters do not move, if the camera does not move, there is no space to move in <laughs> and we can say that motion or movement is primary, space is secondary. So the mind derives this concept of space from movements also, not only from senses. Actually the senses are configured so that the organisms can move properly. If it, the organism does not move, it does not need a model of space in its mind. For example, the trees, they do not probably sense any space, but they have some other senses. They sense the light and so on. Yes, but what is motion? Motion is a change. And as we know by now that uh, no change can be perceived if there is no memory. The memory gives us an illusion of motion and uh, therefore motion is also due to memory. Motion is an outcome of mental process of memorizing and recalling. And therefore motion is also mind. If you trace it back, the space is mind only. There is no space. It is all a creation of the mind. Just like everything else. So if it becomes too tiny, we cannot perceive it. If it be becomes too big, we cannot perceive it and then we must rely on mathematical models. If the phenomena requires a different kind of coordinate systems, we simply invent it. And uh, we, say we can also trash the orthogonal axis. We can have any kind of axis. We can even have curved axis and we can have spherical uh, spaces also. We can have any kind of space actually when it comes to mathematics. There is no limit. We can have any dimensions in our spaces. It is possible. So uh, we, if we take a look at our um, perception again, there is no three-dimensional space. We cannot actually perceive three-dimensional space. We perceive only two-dimensional space. And uh, because we have binocular vision, we have two eyes, the mind then constructs the field of depth in front of us so that we can move effectively. Otherwise, it is not possible to move properly. And uh, we can see that uh, the space that we perceive is actually two-dimensional, not three-dimensional. So the Cartesian space describes something which is abstract, not something which is perceived. And uh, our ears also create uh, space, but it is mostly created out of one-dimensional data, the sounds that arrive in time. So mind is capable of doing it. So we can suspect that probably there are no dimensions out there. The dimensions also depend on the kind of sense that we have. Now let us go to the mental space. It is also a one-dimensional space. The thoughts are happening, but there is a distance between two thoughts. The emotions are happening or the memories are being recalled, but uh, they happen in time. It looks like they are arriving linearly and it looks like it is all happening at one place. There are no uh, more than one dimensions in the mind. It is one-dimensional. Although it expands into a three-dimensional space in our dreams or in our imaginations, it is possible the mind can do that. But uh, the mental space is basically one-dimensional. It can be directly seen. Then uh, um, 
it looks like that it is really happening in the head but we you know there is no space in the head there is the head is happening in the perceptual space let us uh, take a look at the space of consciousness where everything is happening where everything is being known of which we are aware right now how many dimensions it has what distance we have between one instance of awareness and the other instance of awareness is it happening in time and no the consciousness has no dimensions it is zero dimensional it is happening all now always it is always now in terms of consciousness even though the mind is happening in consciousness the perception is happening in consciousness all the spaces appear in consciousness but the consciousness itself appears without space it is zero dimensional it is not a thing it it is not something which is extended it is not something which can can be seen that which is perceiving right now right here all the spaces is spaceless he is beyond space so we can arrive at this conclusion that uh, space is an illusion it is being created by the mind by the sensory data the information it is a trick of the mind to make sense of its environment and it does that in order to survive there is a reason that we make models of uh, our environment uh, the 3d model the 2d model 1d model whatever Uh, the reason is only one survival it enables survival it enables the organism to function effectively there is no other reason to create this illusion it is very useful but an illusion all these illusions are happening in the space of consciousness which is exactly zero dimensional our direct experience has no space it has no dimensions it is zero dimensional it is amazing that we are able to experience all these spaces and we are able to experience all these dimensions the consciousness or awareness is zero dimensional the mind is one dimensional the sound is half way between one dimensional or three and three dimensional the eyes are two dimensional but also produce an effect of three dimensions and when we move it appears that we move in three dimensions we can add the time as another dimension which many people want to do <laughs> for some reason they say that our experience is four dimensional when there is motion yes the component of time can be added into our experience and then the whole of the experience becomes four dimensional so it is amazing that all these experiences of so many dimensions are happening right now and we are capable of witnessing them that is something mind blowing and even something which is even more mind blowing is that all these spaces appear in the space of consciousness in the zero dimensional space of consciousness since it is zero dimensional it can be infinite infinite amount of spaces can appear in consciousness the whole world appears in consciousness all the space in it the whole universe appears in consciousness is there any other space in which the whole universe can appear the whole mind appears in consciousness the dream state the waking state and various altered states where you can if you are interested you can visit other spaces other realities which are almost infinite in extent which are bigger than the physical space that we are familiar with all these experiences are happening in the space of consciousness even though it is zero even though it has no volume even though there is no space in it because it is zero it can become infinity infinity is my nature i am this witnessing consciousness and i am infinite actually 
all spaces are contained in me i am not this little thing that is happening in some imaginary space created by a mind i am something which encompasses all the spaces everything that ever happened anywhere is happening within me i am that i am that infinite experiencer which itself never appears in any space which is not confined by any dimension any space i am that witness consciousness thank you for listening asito ma <laughs>